So um, I'm going to sh- I'm going to tell you my story now um, about one particular person, um, and this is a person that um, I don't hate. Okay, and it's a person that I've never talked about before. This is one of those people who made a bunch of bad videos about us. Some of you who are around during that time, 2009, you may have known this person um, on YouTube. Their name was a prodigal child. After. The Calvinist videos were uh, released and um, all of the negative videos started coming out. This person released, I think, maybe like 17 negative videos about our ministry. They just kept coming. But um, what a lot of people don't know (laughs) is that this person who, um, you know, would seem to have been completely anti TikTok ministries, this person actually started out as a friend of this ministry. And we met her because when we started um, the FWBN, um, we wanted to include other teachers on the network, not just Monica. Okay. And this is a, an example as to, you know, if you uh, wonder why we're a little bit guarded um, and why it seems that we're kind of marching out there um, alone. Well, you know, when you're a leader, sometimes it is a little bit lonely, even if you don't want it to be that way. We want people to come up with us, but we have to go the direction that Jesus has told us to go. And that is straight out of Babylon. Okay. And if that means that I'm at the head of the pack, you guys, and I can't see anybody beside me, I'm just gonna have to trust that you guys are falling because I'm going to keep on going. All right. Because I want to show you the way out. I want to teach you what God says about how you can get out, all right? But um, we wanted other people to be on the network. We uh, talked to this person, a prodigal child, and um, I talked to her on the phone. We had uh, listened to a lot of her videos, and um, we heard a lot of good teaching coming out of her ministry, a lot of good sound teaching where she was just going straight to the Bible, telling people what the Bible said, not mincing words, not adding a bunch of words to it. She was doing a good job. And, you know, we didn't watch all of her videos, but we watched enough to say, okay, we're comfortable with the fact that you know this person is doing a good job and we want this word to be on our network so I called her I talked to her she was very excited about it and um, I wanted to make sure that we're on the same page on a few things I asked her to watch a few of my videos uh, make sure we're on the same page about the fact that yes it is okay scripturally for women to teach because I know that is one place where you know if I put a woman teacher on my channel I know that they're gonna get attacked by some people who really insist that women should not teach because they don't know their Bible very well okay so so, you know, I wanted to make sure that she um, was on the same page and she was. She came back and she said, yeah, that's great. I, I like the teaching that I've seen, you know, and I agree with those things and I want to be on on your network. So I produced a show for her. A lot of people don't know this, but I actually produced a show for her. Um, and, you know, we worked hard on that show and, and I was proud of it. I was glad to be able to, you know, to, to help. Um, but it was really more about getting God's word out there. You know, I saw that she was putting forth God's word, wanted to help her do that, okay? Most people who saw the subsequent 17 videos after the Calvinist video, they have no idea. And actually, I think later on, I don't know if I can find it. I might be able to find this. Um, uh, We might drop a video into the feed um, where she is actually promoting the FWVN, okay? And a lot of people um, who were there at that time would be very shocked to hear that, you know, because you would have no idea that she actually used to be a friend or portrayed herself as a friend. But let me tell you what happened. Um, from what we could tell what happened with her. Again, talking about getting close to the truth. It's very hard, okay? As long as everybody's cool, as long as um, the, you know, the truth is popular, then um, then it's easy to be around the truth. As long as Jesus is, you know, healing people and doing miracles, then it's fine. You know, that's a popular thing. You can be part of that crowd and it's no problem. But when the persecution starts, when the religious leaders come in and start criticizing Jesus and saying, he is not a legitimate leader. He is not sent by God. He's filled with demonic spirits. Um, Anyone who follows him is going to get kicked out of the synagogue. Whenever that uh, kind of persecution starts, it gets harder and harder to be around that truth. Okay. So when we release these Calvinist videos, um, all that I know is that um, this person, um, you know, when we released the first video, she actually made some positive comments on the first video. She's like, good video. You know, she agreed with it. But she had some friends who were Calvinists who called her, and one in particular, and she told me that he had called. And it wasn't long after that um, that she started listening to these voices, and some of these very people put up very, um, not, not just like, I disagree with you videos, really vulgar videos that no Christian should be entertaining, okay? Um, and she 
was still friends with them. Okay. She was friends with them. She was listening to their influence and really succumbed to peer pressure. Okay. Now I didn't watch all of her videos. Um, I don't actually don't even think I watched any of her videos. Um, Gary, Gary, yeah, Gary didn't let me watch any, in any of her videos. He's confirming for me, but Gary is familiar, um, with every, you know, whenever people come against our ministry, he, you know, takes note of it because there are dangerous people out there who have threatened and who have tried to carry out those threats. And so, you know, uh, Gary does take that response responsibility to know what's going on out there. Um, the little bit that I did, he, you know, hear of, um, you know, it, it was really my first, honestly, my first tabloid moment uh, is what I call it. I, I had never really experienced, you know, I'd been in the public eye for a little while, but I'd never really experienced that moment where you see that tabloid and it, it's just a completely made up lie about you. Like it has no basis in reality or it's exactly the opposite of reality. You know, I didn't really realize that people would actually just make up lies and say them about you. I mean, I, I guess I know that that happens, but I just never thought it would happen to me. Um, and that was what uh, those videos were full of those kinds of things, you know, and I could have spent, you know, years trying to defend myself and I just figure if I'm worth defending, Jesus will do it for me. Um, but what we what we saw is that eventually, not just this person, but all the people that were putting forth this hate, you know, they, they have problems because they were using hate as a tool, okay? Not just against me, but against other people. And they began to have problems in their lives. They began to have problems in their relationships and in their relationships with people online. And they started having their accounts taken down. Most of those videos um, that were put up are now down. A lot of the channels have been shut down by YouTube, you know? And that's because hate is a destructive force. And if you use it, it's going to turn around and bite you too, right? And it tears us apart. And that's my point. That's what I want um, to get out tonight, you guys. Whenever you tear apart another Christian, all right, and you use your influence, especially to try to separate someone and say, oh, you need to stay away from that person. They're dangerous. Well, they're dangerous, you know, because they're different from you. Listen, everybody's in Babylon. Everybody's wrong about some stuff, you guys. We've got to have some humility and know that the king is the one that's going to do the judging. The king is the one that's going to do the cleaning up. Okay, that's his job. It says that he's the one that cleanses the bride uh, with the pure water of the word and with his blood. He's the one that does that work. Okay, our job is to allow him to do it to us. All right. And when we participate in negative talk, we have to understand that more than one person is going to be affected that the body of Christ is going to be affected in a negative way, okay? And that people are going to be torn apart. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. You know, when stuff like this happens, you know, I don't get on and talk about it. I don't want to talk bad about people. I don't want to get on and argue with them. And I don't want to get on and make fools out of them if they don't know what they're talking about, you know, when they, they try to use the scriptures the wrong way or whatever. I don't want to make them look stupid personally. You know, I don't want to do that to them. I'm sure that I've been wrong about something and I would like for someone to deal with me graciously if I am, you know. I don't want to do that to my own brothers and sisters. But I want to bring this story to you um, today so you will think about what you're doing. And honestly, you know, does it hurt when people do this? I mean, think about it. Would it hurt if people did that to you? You need to think about that when you're talking about someone. And I also want to be a voice of sanity for you so that you can understand that just because you think somebody is famous, that does not make it okay to talk bad about them. You guys, your talk will affect their lives. All right. It may not, you know, they may not ever connect it, but it has a spiritual effect. Okay. Your words are very powerful. So we need to use our words to encourage one another to show grace and mercy to one another, okay? And understand that if someone is wrong about their doctrine, that's easy for Jesus to fix. If someone has hate in their heart, that's the thing that's gonna send them to hell, okay? So you don't wanna have hate in your heart towards that person because their doctrine's wrong. <laughs> Do you understand? You're the one that's gonna end up on the losing end of the stick because Jesus will justify that person if they've got some of their information wrong, but if they love, and then here you are over here thinking that you're doing the kingdom of God a favor and, you know, hunting down all the heretics and weeding out all the heresy and and uh, telling everybody how, how they can be right. And in the meantime, you, because you're not playing according to the rules, as Paul said, you're being disqualified yourself for the prize after having preached the gospel to so many people. You're going to disqualify yourself because it says you can't get the prize unless you uh, play according to the rules. And the rule that Jesus has given us is love. So let me read that to you. Um, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Gary says that um, we're going to pray for our enemies and, and, you know, that's the plan. We want to do that. 
Um, and honestly, you guys, let me read this to you and then we'll, we will pray. Okay. It says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. So that says it all right there. Okay, you guys, love covers a multitude of sins. Let Jesus be the expert here. Let Jesus be the healer. Let Jesus be God. Let him put the body of Christ together. You're not going to be able to do it. (laughs) Do what you can do. Love your neighbor, and especially the person who calls themselves a Christian, even if they're not acting like it, okay? You know, for somebody in my position, somebody whose family has actually, you know, gone through some tough times because of the things that people have said about us, and not only me and my husband, but also my children, you know, they, they've suffered because of those things. Someone in my position could very easily look at somebody like this person I'm telling you about, a prodigal child, and say, well, they're not really Christian because they hate. But this is what I see. Okay, you guys, I see that this is a person who was speaking God's word and who listened to the voice of someone who was hating and as a result was infected with hate herself. What I would personally like to see is for her to be cleansed of that hate And for her to be cleansed of lies, to have the lies taken out of her mouth so that she can be justified with God and so that she can be an effective tool in God's kingdom. Because I know that God can use her. I know that. And I know that any of us, you guys, can be subject to this. I want you to think about the apostles, you know. I mean, the apostles were the ones that were chosen by Jesus. Those 12 apostles that are going to be sitting on 12 thrones, all right? They're very important people in the kingdom of God. And yet they had a hard time when they got too close to the truth. And when the heat was turned up and when it looked like it was time for a crucifixion, man, they didn't want to be anywhere around that. Okay. So understand that when people mess up and when people are not loyal to you as a member of the body of Christ, as you are trying to come out of Babylon, you got to give them some grace, you guys, because I want you to look at those same apostles. Just look at what they were able to do after they had a revelation of the risen Christ, not only did they go on to to reign on their thrones, they went on to sacrifice their lives like Jesus did. They went on to to grow into the full maturity of Christ's love. They all laid down their lives and suffered for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they did their duty and they did have that same kind of love. So when you see a person doing this, when we see a person like this, and there are a lot of them, it's not just this one person. This is just one example. Um, But when I look at this lady, what I see is a person who's been taken captive to do Satan's will. And my hope is that it's for a short period of time and that she will be set free from that. I'm not saying that to be condescending because it can happen to any of us, okay? I'm saying that because that that is honestly what would make me very, very happy is for her to be set free from that so that she can go on to be effective. As long as, you know, you're spewing hate, you can't be effective, obviously. I want to see her be effective. I want her to have a good day when she faces Jesus. I know that if anybody comes against someone that he loves, he's not going to look too kindly on that. It's not because he shows favoritism towards me. It's because he has that same attitude towards every single person. Okay, so right now what I want to do is I want to ask you guys to come with me. I want to pray for a prodigal child, okay? And she doesn't go by that name on YouTube anymore. I think that account is shut down. I'm not sure, but I think her videos about me have been taken down, but she may have closed her account. I think that's what happened. I think she closed her account. She may have another one now. Um, I have absolutely no malice towards this person at all. I want to see good things happen to her. And so I want to um, ask you to come and join me in praying for her, that God's will will be done in her life and that she would be very effective in the kingdom of God. Okay, let's do that. Father in heaven, right now we come to you and we pray right now. I pray personally for uh, this person. I pray that you remember all the good things that she's done. I pray that you would remember every time that she has sought after you, Lord God. I pray that you would remember those things and that you would not let them be for nothing, that you would not allow her heart to be forever infiltrated with hate, but that you would help her to come to her senses and that, that you would heal the relationships that Satan has come in and torn apart in her life, Lord God. And I pray that you would just let her know that we love her, Lord God, and that our door is always open to her, that, that we love her um, and our hearts are for her and not against her, Lord God, and that there is a way out of this mess and that Satan wants us all to be in a mess, but that there is a, a graceful way out of this mess that we all can come together and love one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
All right, you guys. So that's how we do it. That's how we come out of Babylon. We don't do it by bludgeoning our family members that we love. We got to remember how much we love each other, how much God loves us, right? And so that's why we're doing this. And I hope that you guys can tell um, from that story. I don't like to talk about those things because it's really hard to talk about um you know, problems that you have with people, conflicts that people have with you, especially, you know, people that you don't know really well, but they just talk about you in the public forum. It's really hard to do that without being condescending. Okay. And I never, uh, you know, sometimes I think it's just easier to just go pray for them in my closet. Um, but you know, I hope you guys can get the sense that this is a person that I really, I don't know her really well, but I really do want good things to happen in her life. And I'm not, I'm not lying. Okay. And I don't think that I'm any better than her. I do know that as long as we're hating, we're not in God's will, right? And I want all of us to be in God's will together. Okay, so I hope that you guys can see how God's word actually works in our lives, how he can keep us even when we're being persecuted from bitterness and hate. Not that it doesn't hurt. It does hurt. I'm not going to lie, you guys. It hurts. People say bad things about you. People say bad, nasty, mean things. It hurts, you know, and if they get satisfaction in causing pain, then they can be satisfied. But, you know, people cause Jesus pain and um, and his power was not in the fact that he didn't have to endure any pain. It's in the fact that he got up right? <laughs> he was laid in the dust and he got back up again. That's exactly what we're going to do. You know, keep on hitting us. We're going to turn the other cheek. We're going to love you. Um, and we're going to keep on getting back up and, and preaching and prophesying as long as, you know, God has ordained for us to do it. He has a date set in stone that is going to be our last day on earth. When that day comes, I'm going to say glory. Hallelujah. Until that day, you're going to hear the sound of my voice.